silent watchers, the night. The motion detector came alive. It was a quiet, chilly evening. I had just settled in with a cup of tea. My dog Max curled up at my feet and my cat Luna perched on the windowsill, watching the world go by. The soft hum of the heater and the occasional crackling of the wood in the fireplace were the only sounds in the house. It was peaceful, almost too peaceful. The motion detector, a new addition to the house, had been installed a week ago. It was supposed to add an extra layer of security, especially since I lived alone in a somewhat isolated area. Max and Luna seemed indifferent to it, but I had to admit it gave me a sense of comfort. Tonight, however, that comfort was about to shatter. Just as I was about to doze off, the motion detector's alarm blared through the house, a piercing, high-pitched sound that startled me out of my seat. Max bolted upright, barking wildly, his eyes darting toward the hallway. Luna hissed, her fur bristling as she leapt off the windowsill. I grabbed my phone and checked the app linked to the motion detector. The notification read, movement detected, living room. But that was impossible. I was in the living room and there was no one else here. My heart pounded as I scanned the room. Nothing, just shadows cast by the flickering firelight. Suddenly, the lights throughout the house began to flicker erratically. It was like a scene from a horror movie, each flicker casting strange, distorted shadows on the walls. The alarm continued to wail, its relentless shriek merging with Max's frantic barking and Luna's low growls. Stay calm, I whispered to myself, though my voice trembled. I cautiously stepped toward the hallway, phone clutched tightly in my hand. The light flickered overhead, casting eerie patterns on the walls. Max followed closely, his body tense, ready to protect. The detector's alarm stopped as abruptly as it had started, plunging the house into an eerie silence. The only sound was the soft creak of the wooden floor beneath my feet and the distant hum of the heater. Then, a new sound emerged, a faint tapping. It was rhythmic, deliberate, and it seemed to be coming from the basement. Max, stay here, I whispered, but the dog was already at my side, his eyes locked on the basement door. Luna had vanished, likely hiding in some safe corner of the house. I reached for the door, my hand trembling as I grasped the cold metal knob. The tapping continued, louder now, echoing in the silence. With a deep breath, I swung the door open, revealing the dark descent below. The basement light flickered on its own, casting a pale, sickly glow over the concrete steps. I descended slowly, each step creaking under my weight. Max followed, his growls low and steady. As we reached the bottom, the tapping stopped. The basement was empty, the shelves stood neatly, untouched, and the old furnace hummed quietly in the corner. I scanned every corner, but there was nothing out of place. Just as I was about to turn back, the motion detector's alarm blared again, this time from upstairs. Panicked, I raced back up, Max close behind. The living room was in chaos. The lights were flashing wildly, the alarm shrieking louder than ever. And then, in the midst of the cacophony, I saw it. A shadowy figure stood in the middle of the room. It was tall, featureless and unmoving. The flickering lights played tricks with its form, making it seem like it was shifting, morphing. Max barked furiously, but the figure didn't move. Gathering every ounce of courage, I shouted, who are you? What do you want? But there was no response, only silence as the alarm cut off and the lights suddenly stopped flickering. The figure was gone. One blink and it vanished, leaving behind only the unsettling memory of its presence. Max and I stood in the silent room, the tension slowly dissipating. Luna emerged from her hiding spot, cautiously sniffing the air. That night, I didn't sleep. I sat on the couch, Max by my side, Luna in my lap, the three of us keeping watch. The motion detector didn't go off again, but the uneasy feeling lingered. The next day, I checked the footage from the motion detector, hoping to find some explanation, but there was nothing, no sign of the figure, no sign of any movement, just me, Max and Luna, sitting in the living room, waiting for whatever was out there to make its next move. Since that night, the motion detector has gone off a few more times, always at the same hour, always without explanation. 
I don't know what it was that visited us or why it came, but every night as the clock strikes midnight, I sit with Max and Luna, waiting for the silent watchers to return.